Hey, algebra students, how you doing? Today we're talking about rational numbers, okay? Rational, what are rational numbers? Rational numbers are any numbers that can be expressed as a ratio, okay? A ratio or a fraction of two integers. Now, what do I mean by that? Numbers like this. One-fourth, it's one divided by four. Or one-half, it's one divided by two. Three-tenths, three divided by ten. One-eighth, one divided by eighth. Or divided by eight, excuse me. So, that's what a rational number is. And a rational number can be written as a fraction, like I just showed you, or it can also be written as a decimal. 0.25 and one-fourth, that's the same number. It's just, it's just got two, two different names, two different ways of writing it, but it's the same concept either way. 0.3 and three-tenths, exactly the same number. 0.5 and one-half, the same number. So, now, if you have a rational number written as a fraction and you want to write it as a, as a decimal, it's really easy. All you have to do is just do long division, or just grab a calculator and do the division, and you'll see one divided by four is, voila, 0.25. One divided by two is 0.5. It's just a simple matter of dividing the numbers. Now, what if you want to go from decimal to fraction? What if you have your number written as a decimal and you want to write it as a fraction? Well, then uh, what you do is you uh, take 0.25. It's got two digits behind the decimal. So you divide it by 100. That means 25 one hundredths, which simplifies out to one fourth. 0.3, that's one digit behind the decimal. So you divide it by 10, 3 tenths. I know this is all review, okay? And that's, that's all right. But I'm just getting this in the, uh, in the forefront of your mind. So, now, these are all easy because these are all terminating decimals, meaning you write out the decimal and it stops. But as you know, not all decimals terminate. There are some repeating decimals, okay? For example, one-third, okay? If you were to take one-third and divide that, one-third, if I divide three into 1.0000, this goes in three times, I get three times, and that's three times, and you can see that you just get caught in this loop. So what that means is one-third equals 0.333 going on infinitely long, and that equals, the way we write that is 0.3 bar, okay? 0.3 with a line over it, we call that 0.3 bar, and it simply means 0.3 repeating forever. So, one-third equals 0.3 bar. Now again, I'm asking, what if we have the repeating decimal and we want to write that as a fraction? I'll show you how. Let's take the example of 0.5 bar, okay? 0.5 bar, which is 0.5555, and on and on and on, okay? And let's call it x. That's what x is, okay? So, th here's the trick. Ask yourself, what's 10 times x? Well, 10 times x is 10x, okay? But what's 10 times this number here? Well, multiplying a number times 10, all you do is you just move the decimal point over. So this would be 5.555, etc. right? Now, let's use a little algebra. Let's use some algebra rules we've l learned recently. And uh, one thing that we know from algebra is if I do something to one side of the equation, I have to do the exact same thing to the other side of the equation, okay? So 10x, I'm gonna subtract x from this side. And if I subtract x over here, I have to subtract x over here, right? Okay, 10x minus x, that's gonna be 9x, okay? And 5.555 minus x, tell you what, instead of calling it x, I'm just gonna write it in its decimal form, which is, 0.555, etc. Okay? And what happens? 5 minus 5 is 0, 5 minus 5 is 0, 5 minus 5 is 0, 5 minus 0 is 5. So all of this decimal stuff just, you can see, it just cancels itself out. And you end up with 9 times x equals 5. And what does that mean? It means that x equals 5 ninths. Huh. Okay, and as a matter of fact, 
you can kind of tell from looking at this that this would have worked, notice that all the digits I wrote are just fives, right? This would have worked with fours or with threes or with twos or with ones. So as a matter of fact, you end up with the generalization that 0.1 bar is 1 ninth, 0.2 bar is 2 ninths, 0.3 bar is 3 ninths, and as we saw earlier, 3 ninths, that just simplifies to 1 third. Yep, we saw that earlier, that 1 third does equal 0.3 uh, bar. So it doesn't matter what you have as your single repeating decimal, when you convert that to a fraction, it's always going to be that, that uh, digit divided by uh, 9. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's look at the example of uh, 0.13 bar. Okay, this time it's a little different. I'm going to have x equal this. Now, what does 0.13 bar mean? Notice the bar is just over the 3, not over the 1. So that means this is 0 0.13333, etc. Okay? Let's go through the exact same process, do the exact same thing. 10 times x, 10 times this. Uh, well, that would be 1.333, etc. Okay? Those equal each other. I'm going to subtract x from either side. Minus x here, and minus, let's write it in its decimal form here. 0.133, etc. Okay? 10x minus x, 9x. 3 minus 3 cancels out, 3 minus 3 cancels out, 3 minus 1 is 2, and 1 minus 0 is 1. And so what do I get? I get 9 times x equals 1.2. So x equals 1.2 over 9. Now, whenever I have a decimal and a fraction, I don't like that very much. So let me multiply both numerator and denominator times 10, and I get. 12 over 90, and 12 and 90, I believe those are both divisible by 6, and so I can call that 2 over 15, and sure enough, that's exactly what the fraction is. 0.13 bar equals 2 fifteenths. Go ahead and uh, divide uh, 15 into 2, and you'll see it does equal 0.13 bar. You want another one, I can tell. Let's look at another one. Okay, let's try 0.416 bar, okay? In other words, 0.416666, etc. All right? That's what x is going to be this time. So, same thing. What do I multiply x by? 10. 10 times x equals 4.16666, etc. Okay? And again, I'm going to subtract x from this side and get 9x. And again, I'm going to subtract what x equals, this 0.41666, etc., from this side. And what do we get? 6 minus 6, nothing. 6 minus 6, nothing. 6 minus 6, nothing. 6 minus 1 is 5. And 41 minus 4 is 37. So I get 3.75. That's what 9x equals. Uh, okay, so that means x equals 3.75 divided by 9, which is the same thing as 375 over 900. And, uh, oh man, okay, let's see. If I divide that by uh, 3, I would get 125 over 300. And if I divide that by 25, I get... 5 over 12, and that's exactly what my answer is, 5 twelfths. So 0.416 bar equals 5 twelfths. I think you're starting to get the hang of this. So let me give you something that's slightly different. Let me give you two decimals, or two digits that repeat, okay? So this is going to be, let's take the example of 0.36 with the bar over both the 3 and the 6. So this is 0 0.363636, etc., like that, all right? That's what x is going to be. So this time we're going to do something similar, but a little bit different, okay? So this time, instead of multiplying x by 10, I'm going to multiply x by 100, okay? 100x will be, well, what do you do when you multiply something by 100? You move the decimal point over 
two times. So it's going to be 36, 0.36, 36, 36, etc. Okay? Subtract x from both sides. So I'm going to get 99x on this side. And on this side, I'm going to subtract x, which is 0 0.36, 36, 36. So minus 0 0.36, 36, 36. Oops. And I get 36 because all of this just takes care of itself. So I get 99x equals 36. So x must equal 36 over 99. And you're probably saying, whoa, hey, hold it, we can simplify that. Those are both multiples of 9. You're right. This is 4 over 11. And sure enough, if you divide 11 into 4, you're going to get 0 0.36, 36, 36, 36, 36, 36. Okay, so what was different this time? What was different is we had two repeating decimals. And so what we did is we multiplied both sides by 100. So now you're probably thinking, yeah, okay, fine, but what if we have three repeating decimals? Let's look at one. Three repeating decimals. For example, let's say we have 0.162 with all of the decimals repeating. So that's what x is going to be. It's going to be 0.162, 0.162, etc. Okay? What do we multiply both sides by? You guessed it right. We multiply times a thousand, okay? Why a thousand? Because we have three digits that are repeating. So a thousand x will be 162.162162, etc. And if I subtract x from this side, and if I subtract 0.162162 repeating from that side, I've done the same thing because x equals 0.162162162. And uh, what do I have here? I have 999x. And what do I have over here? I have 162. So that means x equals uh, 162 over 999. Oh my goodness, let's see. Those are both divisible by 9, so that would be uh, 18 over 111. By the way, I didn't just do that in my head. I prepared for this. And uh, oh, I can divide this by 3 one more time and I get 6 divided by 37, and sure enough, that's exactly what our fraction is, 6 divided by 37. And if you divide 37 into 6 point oh, 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 you'll get 0 0.162, 162, 162, 162. All right? That's how you turn repeating decimals into fractions with the magic of algebra. See you next video. Bye-bye.